Hi okay, guys, Luton here, and I'm back for another round breakdown on Battlefield 4. Now, we haven't had a round breakdown for a while. This is basically the series where I take a completely raw piece of gameplay and we just work through, look at what's happening in the game, look at the things that go wrong, the things that go right, and I leave in, for the most part, barring any long periods of time, all of the gameplay. Um, I always thought it was good to do this. I always did this with a lot of my gameplay because it used to frustrate me when I would see YouTubers post, like, you know, a five second clip of them getting, like, a three or four kill, and then it cuts to another one. And another one and it's just like dude just fucking show the gameplay seriously it's, you know um, like that you know a lot of people wouldn't post that there because they're like damn got owned by that guy and it's like yeah you did that's what happens in battlefield sometimes you know you show the good and the bad right um, but anyway so we'll look at what's happening in here a uh, little update yeah there's some other things going in battlefield of course there's the night maps thing people keep saying like why haven't I spoken about it just because it doesn't really interest me. I think it's being very overblown. Uh, I'll talk about that on another video probably, but um, I'll probably make an individual, just short video talking about that. Battlefield news! <sighs> anyway. Um, so yeah, okay, let's look what's happening. What are we thinking about here? What are we thinking about at the start of the round? Well, obviously you want to push into them as quickly as possible. You want to try and get to where the enemy is. You want to try and start denying them positions. At the same time, you need to be very aware of what they may do. Now, they've capped up uh, a couple of the bases here, so have we. It's pretty even pegging right now. Our guys have pushed forward pretty well at the very early start. And as you can see, I'm pushing here towards C and maybe on to A. But I immediately identified there's a few guys in here. But I am suddenly found myself facing about three or four enemies on this position that they're trying to take from us. And I find myself slightly pinned down. I'm trying to clear these guys off here as best that I can. I didn't want to just throw myself out there. And I wanted to try and get away, get into the wall. When you see Trigger here, Trigger's actually my squad, but on the enemy team today. And I get clipped. I wanted to try and sort of move around that position and try and pin them, slow them down. I was hoping that you could see, I was calling out to my guys, hoping that I'd get a bit of support in there. But it just did not come fast enough. So instead we've spawned back here at A. And we're going to try and undermine them from the rear. We're going to try and take this position back away from them. And try and put the pressure on them from a different point. But again, look, it <laughs> didn't work out. Got clipped going up the stairs there. That's bad luck for me. So it's surprising though, um, taking an LMG, I've seen many times people say LMGs are not useful or that they're only useful for camping situations or things like this. It's not true really, they're good all the time on the go. Uh, you see a lot of the time, I mean this, this right here for example, I think, do I get a kill here? Yeah, I mean look at that, it's ridiculous. It's like crazy you get the kill at that range. And it shows like once you've got it down and bipodded how stable it can be. And there's a really good example of that later on as well, why I absolutely tear them up. But um, even without that, just if you're sitting crouched or whatever or on the go, I mean, I don't have this with um, a grip or anything. It's obviously got the bipod on, but it's totally manageable when you're just firing, like ADSing or hip firing. It's completely manageable. I'm just going to lay some C4 here. I think I have a feeling I got clipped there. No, maybe not. Oh, yeah, it was here. <laughs> I was like, I knew that was going to happen. So I, this was actually a while back, and I just remembered that. <laughs> Yeah, so Hardline's coming up pretty soon as well, obviously. that's We're building right up to the release, and uh, no doubt it's going to be a hype spam fest when it comes out. But I'm going to try and keep it sort of on the level with you guys when it comes to Hardline. I'm going to try and focus on giving some good information, giving some good overviews, and giving you my thoughts about the game. And we'll start from there and then work out other things as we go along. But um, I don't want to go too insane about it. I don't want to have, like, sort of heart attacks of hype. So we'll see what happens. Anyway, so we're spawning back here at A, and we're trying to sort of basically stabilise and control this situation. We, they have obviously pushed up, and it, this is quite a balanced attacking uh, round all throughout. And it's a, it's a good testament to the enemy team that we're playing against. And it's also down partly to the fact that there's a good mix of people from my clan and other guys who are aware of us and know us sort of coming in on this round. So we had a good sort of balance for both teams, and it means we ended up getting some good gameplay as always, which is what you want to see. I'm hoping that we'll have some of this from the very beginning with Hardline as well, just to mention that yet again. Uh, coming into it, the one thing that I want to see is obviously like well-fought games and not these rounds where they're like over in minutes because that you just steamroll through. So I'm going to be pushing pretty hard and definitely within the first week or so of Hardline, my server will be changing over to Hardline so you can come in there and get some good gameplay. Okay, so I'm sort of holding around C here and just holding this position. We've got people behind capping it. Now notice, you know, I'm not actually on the flag. And this is, again, something that we see constantly, you know. Uh, often people really, really desperately want to get those tickets. And a more important thing can be to kind of deny an attack or position coming in. 
and that's really what we were doing here marking targets controlling that area and preventing them from pushing up into where you want to be and this doesn't happen enough in a lot of games uh, there's a good round as well we played this evening which I'll probably maybe post another time in a week or whatever um, we were playing that one and that was on uh, Hainan Resort one of the worst maps that, that I particularly dislike um, but it actually played out really well and the reason it played out really well is because both teams were controlling areas and moving and attacking and um, not to mention the fact there was some good weathering going on between the assault players which is also really important um, so yeah when it comes to this map that kind of control is really really important these maps which are especially with chain link where the maps tend to be big and wide and open it's one of the things that I like about chain link is that the domination maps tend to be quite small because they dictate that kind of um, small close quarter gameplay but the chain link maps tend to be open and still fully capable much like a conquest map but you still have that kind of domination style of gameplay because you tend to not have really vehicles and so on and that's one of the reasons why I really like chain link um, just to mention another thing you know for all the night maps are, I would have far preferred to have seen other game modes included on maps that they don't exist right now. I think that would have contributed far more significantly to the longevity of the game than just having some slightly darker maps. Um, but, you know, that's just me. Okay, so we're back here and trying to control this area and you can see we're coming under some pretty heavy fire. Um, Again, I'm trying to flank away and get away from these guys. I really wanted to get around and try and get eyes on what's happening. And, you know, you don't really want to bunch up and be together. This is something that happens so often. You really don't want to be coming over that hill there as a group of three or four. At the very least, let the other guys go in front of you so that you necessarily don't die and you don't give too many targets to the enemy. Now, here was the interesting moment. Look at this. This is just... Oh, man, it's ridiculous. It just shows... Look, I'm beating snipers like you can see just like a fraction of someone and the weight of ammo that you carry just enables you to absolutely thrash them into the ground you don't need any sort of extra range with these things I even had the extra uh, obviously the, the magnifier on didn't even feel the need to throw that magnifier on there because I can see just like the tiny tiny movement of enemy players and then you can just start to lay it down sniper's trying to get back on me does he actually headshot me I can't remember I think I get another kill and then I bail out because I realise the snipers are like looking at me and I'm a stationary target there. But it was it was interesting to capitalise on that situation there because there was other guys running across the hill and you knew that they were going to be a target. I wanted to just sit up there for a minute and basically what I was doing was providing suppressing fire so that the guys could move forward. Now I don't think it worked particularly successfully in terms of them actually being able to move in and secure the position but I did manage to suppress and you know resolve that situation at the longer range. So it just shows the versatility of the weapon more than anything else. The fact that you can handle it at that close quarter range when you're just sort of ADSing and running around like that or even hip firing. Um, but you can see at the longer range, even with that optic, um, it performs very, very well indeed. And, and that's the thing with the LMGs. I think sometimes I've seen people saying, well, the LMG doesn't stack up against the assault rifle and again this is what it comes back to when I talked about before the, the whole thing of like there is no best weapon and it's it's ridiculous to sort of say like this weapon will always beat another weapon in a certain situation it just it just doesn't happen you know if I turn a corner and somebody's got a, a FAMAS or something or a, a, an AEK or something like that against my M249 chances are yeah they're going to drop me almost instantly on the other hand, if he's kind of at medium range, and I happen to sort of get that ADS first, the amount of ammo and suppression that I'm laying down, chances are they are not going to be able to return fire. So it's like, even if they're at medium range, where they would be able to take me out relatively simplistically, it doesn't necessarily mean that that battle is going to happen exactly how it wants to play out. You're never going to turn a corner, and it's, it's unusual to sort of turn a corner and have that one-on-one -on -one situation unless you're in a more close quarter map uh, like Domination and you're having those kind of engagements where you're sort of turning corners and bumping into one another, right? And often in those kind of situations you might not take something like an LMG anyway because you're often facing a lot of very fast ADSing situations. It doesn't necessarily suit that style of gameplay. But on a map like this where it's a lot larger and you have this kind of open area, a map like, uh, you know, an LMG can be a lot more versatile because it enables you to do what I'm doing. It enables you to run forward and still have opportunities to ADS like here look you know beat that guy um, I still took some damage for it for sure and look I got clipped afterwards AWS that's a really nice one as well I should really do a round with an AWS because I haven't for a little while and um, I actually remember that was quite ridiculous race shocks in our clan she always used to use that and uh, she always said about how good the uh, AWS was it was like a weapon of choice 
So I, I remember using it for a while. The AWS is it really will tear it up. People use the MG4 a lot, but I, I actually prefer uh, the AWS to the MG4. That's just my personal preference. I just I just prefer the handling. It just feels I don't know some more stable, better. I just prefer the AWS personally. I think that's the other thing as well is that a lot of the time that's one of the reasons why I haven't done weapon reviews so much because you can look at statistics and you can see all the numbers and you're like okay that's great but at the end of the day if it doesn't actually feel good for you to use you know sometimes you can have a feeling about a gun or weapon or some kind of piece of equipment in the game and you can't really pin down what it is that you prefer about it sometimes there's a weapon which statistically on the table doesn't stack up but for you your ability to handle and control that weapon just means that you have a lot better you know experiences with that gun and and that's another thing about the weapon reviews thing it's like it's all very well and, and yeah I know it's a suggestion it's just a suggestion for people to kind of use these things but at the end of the day it's more important than rather than listening to somebody else's explanation of like hey if you use this gun you'll maybe potentially do a little better hey why don't you just try out weapons for yourself and find which one works for you because it's not all about just like playing the stats or you know finding out okay in 20 by 25 percent of situations like how am i going to perform here you know you've got to get out there and just get to grips with it and try these things for yourself and at the end of the day when it comes to any kind of game whether it's rpgs or mmos or whatever like just getting into it and learning and testing things out is how you actually get better and learn about the game because that's what people have always have done that's what i have always done um for the longest time and that's what we're doing in this round, you know, that's what it is. You're, you're looking back at the gameplay and you're trying to think like, okay, so where have we gone right here? Where have we gone wrong? Well, right now we're actually sort of taking good control of the situation. We're putting pressure on them where they need to and we're keeping control of the game. Your ability to flank and push and get into positions where the enemy will not necessarily expect or don't want you to be is really one of the key tools always in Battlefield. And it should be in Battlefield Hardline as well. We're going in and thinking about that. Um, you know, earlier on this evening when we were playing today for my uh, stream, we found ourselves with 50% of a team who had no interest in moving around the map. They were just trying to stay in position and just basically take as many kills as they could. And when you're supplied with a team like that, if you have enemies on the other team like we did who have got their game together and actually understand that they need to split squads and move around the map and cap positions, it suddenly becomes very, very difficult. So that's something that really, really helps to make games more enjoyable, is when people actually want to get to grips and get in and get on with the game and actually push for the objectives. Because, you know, that's really the whole purpose of what you're doing. Uh, that's why you have a game mode in the first place, is to actually give you an objective to complete. That's the whole thing. And then anything else that happens around that is kind of subsidiary. You know, it's not primary, it's subsidiary. Um, so here we are sort of capping and pushing on these bases and again so A we've let it go and this is another thing that I would say is to, to not become obsessive about a base. Uh, that's a really really bad thing and it's happened to me I sometimes do this and it can happen to you without realizing that's why it's really important to make a kind of conscious decision about whether or not you're going to focus on a certain base or not. Um, We've pushed back here onto C because it's important for us to recapture one of these other bases at this point. That was a good shot, by the way, by uh, Svensk. Um, I do wonder whether I was marked, and that's potentially why he was able to clip me through that smoke. But still, nonetheless, good shot there. Um, so yeah, look, we wanted to cap C because we needed to control those two bases, and capping this between B and the others was a good move for us. But now we do need to get out of here, and I am sort of staying around here because we've lost a lot of guys. We still feel like they're in this area, and so I'm sort of flanking to try and get a handle on where they may be. And you can see a really good use of smoke here, tons and tons of smoke dropping down. And yeah, here we are. There's like two or three guys kind of like basically hiding up behind the trains here because we were not sort of stabilizing this uh, map well enough we weren't stabilizing this flag well enough I should say and we needed to make sure that we had cleared this area out before we move on forward but at this point you can see that the team is actually re-securing our base at the back and that's a good thing so it means that we don't have to worry about going back there we can keep control of here and we can perhaps look towards B I'm just seeing if I can spot any of those snipers up on the ridge but overall, we're starting to feel like, you know, we are like several, we're over 100 tickets ahead at this point. So we feel pretty confident that we're in a winning position. And again, this is the other thing is to, to continue fighting through. 
Um, I've said this before on many videos, but for anybody that's new, one of the worst things that you can do in Battlefield or even in any tactical game is to feel like overconfident, feel like you're in a situation where the enemy can do nothing to come back at you, uh, because then you become complacent. You don't focus the same kind of pressure and prioritization as you would normally on any base or any enemy target. And it's really, really important to still keep in mind, like, okay, if they get behind us and completely take control of the situation, that is going to be particularly bad for us. And again, you can see here the ridiculous range of the M249 with almost, like, no drop-off whatsoever, just firing at that extreme range. It just shows how, and, and again, like I say, the point is, is that I'm not staying back with it. That's the, that's the whole thing. It's not like I'm sitting back with this gun in one position, just like picking off targets left and right. I'm, I'm, I'm firing like that range, and then I'm getting in and moving towards targets and actually using it in multiple different ways. And that's the point, is that versatility, the ability to be a player who can adapt yourself to any situations. Now, unfortunately, what people try to do is they try to sort of hedge their bets and play the odds. You know, they, they don't want to find themselves in any situation where they might lose a gun battle. But the thing is, is that sometimes, you see like this, see you're on the go, I'm moving, I'm trying to take targets, we're trying to get back towards B, because, you know, this is again the objective, we need to secure that objective. So yeah, I could have stayed up there, I could have found a nice cosy position for myself to just bipod up and take down low the enemy, but, you know, we wanted to get here onto this objective, and now my guys have spawned in on me, and we find ourselves here, sort of trying to cap, defend, and clear this base out. But that's another problem is that a lot of the time people just don't want to put themselves in those situations and that's what really loses games a lot of the time is people's unwillingness to move and be flexible and get into different situations because often they just fear dying too much you know they it's, it's the wrong attitude as well like I often think that um, it's, it's a kind of like it's a it's like a false representation it doesn't really work out how you would imagine what people do is like unless you have like a very particularly good camping spot where you can lie down prone like let's say on metro or something like this where you can literally lie down get a bipod and just cut people to pieces and there's no way they're going to get to you right but in a normal map that doesn't happen so often because there's usually multiple ways for people to get around you or to deal with that thing in, in, in certain different ways so staying in one place and I, I have said this before as well when you're outnumbered like I've had rounds where like I'm outnumbered on domination or something like this and you would think that that would become a real problem for you a lot of the time I actually find that it strangely becomes a benefit because rather than feeling like everybody's gonna shoot you I find that it actually presents you with more targets okay so it's interesting how you kind of you think it would play out one way but actually it plays out a different way and that's kind of what can happen in these kind of situations where I'm pushing forward and moving onto targets you, logic sort of dictates that if you stay in a safe position where you can cover the enemy it means that you're going to get a lot of kills and generally sort of do arguably well for yourself often that cannot be the case it can be that either there's just nobody comes along or you get flanked or you stay there for ages and get like one kill and then you get sniped being on the move like this yes there's going to be some situations you appear in where you don't win that battle and you're going to die but there are plenty of other situations where by actually moving around the map you find yourself in situations where you get the drop on that enemy and actually are able to take them down christ that teleport i remember that did you see that he teleported from that bloody stepladder right across over to the doorway unbelievable um, just to have a small mini rant before we end up on this video, okay? That is an example of something that needs to be changed. Like, that is insanity. And we were talking about it at the time. The fact that you teleport, like, 20 meters or something. Or 10 meters or whatever. The fact that you jump up out of the water and go, like, ping. Like, that is insanity. Um, not to mention the whole, like, stepladder thing as well. Um, and the staircase. You walking up a staircase and then you have to, like, jump at the top because some reason your character model. People ask why I get so wound up about things like easter eggs and it's like it's because there's still things like this in this there's, there's still things which affect basic elements of gameplay to a really severe degree and it's like yes people did it in their spare time or whatever the hell you want right i don't care there's other things going on which should take priority over that and it's just it's very very irritating for me to see these kind of things still happening and it's like we're well over a year in at this point and these kind of like things which are like basic elements and have really strong effects on certain situations 
are still left in there. It's very annoying. Anyway, so there we go, guys. That was a little round breakdown. Um, overall, it was a really good round. Had a good, some good action there, some good pinning, some good flanking, some good moving, some good defense. I thought that was a good all-around uh, example of sort of how we can do good squad play. And uh, the enemy team was sort of giving as good as they got. Uh, but overall, we just had the sort of better half, the better 50% of our team. Uh, interesting, though, again, that when you're thinking about teams, um, when you actually look down through the KDs, a lot of their guys sort of further down the list in terms of score. I mean, look at this. They're getting as good sort of KDs as a lot of our guys, but we're getting more like double their score. So again, it just goes to show that, and this is what's the trouble with a lot of public games, People are capable, they're just not willing. And this is what I talk about all the time, is encouraging people to push forward for those objectives. Anyway, there we go, guys. Thanks very much for watching today. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, and I'll see you soon for some more Battlefield, be it all on Hardline.